In the previous video, I showed you how you can define a job, which is a Kubernetes object which creates pods. And Kubernetes does its very best to ensure that the pod completes its job. And the main tuning element of a job is the back off limit. So this is the number of times that Kubernetes should attempt to reschedule the pod if it doesn't complete. As I explained, the prime purpose of this is to avoid unpredictable problems such as node failure causing a job not to complete. Now, I'm not a user of jobs in Kubernetes, but I am a user of a special type of job called a cron job. I know many of you will be familiar with cron. That's a Unix process that enables you to schedule jobs on a Unix or Linux based operating system. So cron is a Linux or Unix tool that allows you to schedule jobs to happen on a regular basis. And cron is driven by a syntax called cron tab. Uh, this is definitely beyond the scope of this course. If you're not already familiar with it, then there are lots of online sites where you can experiment with cron tab syntax. At its core, it can get more complicated than this, but at its core, you, speci you can specify five values, the schedule of when you want the job to run. For example, five asterisks just means run this job every minute. Or if I were to put a five in here, this is the minute field, this is the hour, the day, the day of the month, the month and the day of the week. So a five in there would mean run this job at minute five regularly. So the next one for me would be at 12.05 and then the next repetition of the job after that would be at 13.05 and then at 14.05 and so on. Or I could have set it to run at, this would be at 7.05 a.m. every day. It might be I just want to run this on the first day of the month. So this one for me would next run on the 1st of June 2019. This is definitely something you can spend a long time fiddling about with. So let's have a look then at how we could take the job that we wrote in the previous video and we're going to upgrade this to be a scheduled job. In other words, a Kubernetes cron job. Here on the Kubernetes manual, there is a page for cron job, but they don't actually give an example of how to define one. Really, it's a simple upgrade that we're just going to add in this field of schedule into the existing job. As usual, it's not quite as simple as that because a little bit like we did previously, what we're gonna to have to do is take the existing YAML here, which is the definition of the job, and a bit like we did before, we have to indent this outwards and we need to add a wrapper around it to allow us to put in the cron definition. So I'll warn you in advance that we do end up here with an absolutely horrible set of YAML. Now, rather than me just telling you what to type, I hope by now on the course, you're not afraid of looking in the Kubernetes reference manual. And I mean here the reference, not these kind of, the other links are sort of friendlier guides to Kubernetes and they're very good, but they're not always complete. So in the reference, definitely bookmark the API reference and pick the version you're working at. Now, I know this isn't very readable, but this is the authoritative guide. So if I want to write a cron job, for example, I'll find it listed here under workloads. And the first thing we want to see is the API version. At the time of recording in version 1.14 of Kubernetes, it's batch forward slash v1 beta one. I don't know why this hasn't made v1 yet, but you'll definitely want to check that if you're on a later version of Kubernetes. So that'll be the first thing we need to do. We need to change batch v1 to batch v1 beta or beta one. And the kind of course is going to be changed to cron job. And I think I'll change the metadata name to cron job as well. So yeah, the awkward thing about this, and let me try to step through this, is this spec is now going to be the spec of the cron job and not of the job. And the spec of a cron job, again, I'm working this out by looking in the manual here. There's not a lot in here. 
We've got the API version, the kind and the metadata. The status will be added at runtime. That's not one that we put in. But we are doing the spec here, so I need to follow the link. This is a nested element. And you'll see there are some advanced fields here like concurrency policy and uh, suspend and starting deadline. These are advanced fields. The important one is the schedule field. So we need schedule here. And this is a string which will just have your cron tab expression. For us, it's just five asterisks separated by spaces. One, two, three, four, five. And then I won't force feed you the API guide any further, but then we have the job template field, which will be going here. Now this is where it gets horrible. This job template doesn't have anything interesting in it. There is metadata, which is optional. And there's a field called spec. Now I will always get a bit lost here, but this is actually the specification of the job. And therefore actually what goes in here is exactly what we had previously. So if I indent that in by two, then we're all done. I absolutely hate these nested YAMLs. So we have spec, job template, spec, template and spec again. I hope you f it's a little bit like a Russian doll really in that we have the, we started with the pod and then we've wrapped a job around it. And now we've wrapped a, and now we've wrapped a cron job around that. Apart from the syntax though, I think th these are lovely things to work with really. Let me just remind ourselves where we were at. I can't remember what we've got running in the cluster. Of course, we were doing test jobs previously, so I'll get everything back to how it was. I'll do a kubectl delete job test job. And yeah, we're back to a nice clean sheet. So let's do then kubectl apply dash f on that cron yaml file. And I'm amazed that I got that correct. Now, as previously, I'll put a watch on the get pods. Now, at first, we have no resources found. We've now got a job running, and you'll notice the pod has got this mangled name. Now, as you remember, the job that we've set runs for about 30 seconds before completing, and there it goes. The job is now completed. So this pod will now be abandoned. That will sit there in the completed state forever or until we come along and clean it up. But of course, our cron job should be scheduling another version of this on the next minute marker. And here it goes. And yeah, there's our new incoming pod. And if you want to investigate, of course, we're now going to have an object called cron job in our cluster. And we can, as always, describe the cron job called cron dash job. And that will give us a full table at the bottom showing us every job that has run. So when you've lear already learnt jobs, then cron jobs are really easy to set up apart from this quite sticky YAML structure here. I've most recently used cron jobs, for example, in a system where we have a billing process that we need to run every day. So I've set up a cron job to run at something like midnight every single day. A pod starts up, it does what it needs to do, and the pod stops. Don't forget, you're going to have the pr regular protection from jobs in that if this job doesn't complete, then it will apply that back off limit policy. So we have some level of guarantee that the cron jobs should be successfully executing. So if you've not come across jobs before, I hope that's filled in a blank. There's nothing particularly complicated there, but they are fun to work with. So that's it for jobs and cron jobs. Our next job is to look at daemon set.